Welcome. Does anyone remember where our memory verse is? Matthew 24, 44 is right. Let's try it together. Matthew 24, 44. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man come. That was very cool. Let's try it again. Matthew 24, 44. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man come. That's a lot better. One more time. Matthew 24, 44. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Now, can anyone remember where our last memory verse was? It's 1 John 2.28. And now, little children, well, abide in him that when he shall appear, you may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Let's try that. 1 John 2.28. And now, little children, abide in him that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Good. Again. 1 John 2.28. I tell you what, let's just forget the memory verses. Y'all work on putting those two together because next week I'm going to ask Brother Dennis to put the two together. We'll see if we put two together. What book are we in? The book of Revelation. Brother Larry, who wrote the book of Revelation? God wrote it. What's in the overview? What's chapters 1, 2, and 3? The witness of the Lamb instructed. What's chapters 4 and 5? The worship. The worship of the Lamb invited is right. And what section are we on now? The title. The wrath of the Lamb invoked. It starts in chapter 6 and goes through 19. That's exactly right. Brother Larry, would you pray for me this morning? Please, God. Amen. Amen. We're on the wrath of the Lamb invoked. We're over on the chapter. Will you tell me? Where are we? Chapter 8 is where we'll start today. If we could go around the room and you would read chapter 7, one verse at a time, slow and loud and clear to get our mind back to where it belongs for chapter 8. These things I saw, four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the winds should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. I saw another angel sitting in the seal of the living God. Saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the city, nor the tree, until we have sealed the servants of our God in their forehead. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And there were sealed a hundred and forty and four thousand of all tribes of the children of Israel. Amen. The tribes of Judah were still twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Reuben were still twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Gad were still twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Asher were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Nephthalim were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Manasseh, Manasseh were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Simeon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Iscar were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Zebulun were sealed 12,000. And the tribe of Joseph were sealed 12,000. Amen. All the angels of the heavens round about the throne and about the, and about the heavens of the four beasts fell before the throne on their faces and worship God.
And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? Right. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, made them white, and blood and lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. He that sits on the throne does his way of health. For the man which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Dear Lord, again, I pray you help us right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, for a while since chapter 4, verse 1, we've been on the future, and we've been trying to paint a timeline up front here, the New Testament timeline, and the doors are Calvary, the cross of Christ. It's been 2013 years to right here, and uh, at this point is the rapture, chapter 4, verse 1, and Jesus comes back for us, and we go up. And we had a lesson about that, the judgment seat of Christ. And seven years later, we're going to come back on this side of the table. And we've been talking about what's going on on earth during the tribulation period, during these seven years, while something was going on in heaven. And then we're going to enter into the millennium, a thousand years into the future. That's what we've been talking about. We're on chapter 8 right now. And it says, and when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given the seven trumpets. Now, if you remember, chapter 7 was just like a, kind of like a parenthesis. Back in chapter 6, we started the seal judgments, and there were six of the seal judgments. And I said... We'd hit the seventh one in chapter 8. And here it is. And what the seventh seal really equals at the end of verse 2, are now we're starting the seven trumpet judgments. The seven trumpet judgments are the seventh seal. And it'll start right here today, and it'll go on through chapter 11, to the end of chapter 11, verse 19. The, the trumpet judgments. Things have been bad. They've been bloody. But they're going to get worse. It's going to get worse now that the trumpet judgments are being opened. And uh, when he had opened the seventh seal, let's refresh our memory now. Who's he? That's the lamb. Remember, he opened all six of those seals back yonder, and now he's opening this one too. And uh, when he'd opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. Now all the commentators are in agreement on this. That this proves right here that there'll be no women in heaven. More <laughs> <laughs> uh, you men should have said amen right there. You dug a hole, brother. Back up. Check it out. But I came this morning to tell you something different. Hold your finger right there and look over in chapter 12 and it says, and there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So there's at least one. There's at least one. But I also want to tell you, I came to tell you, it's a wonder. <laughs> It's a great one. It's in black and white, and it's in there to stay. It's a wonder that a woman made it. It's a wonder. It's a wonder. Hey, I looked it up. A wonder means astonishment. All of heaven is astonished that a woman made it. It's KJB right here. A wonder is an emotion excited by a novelty of something. Listen, this is a novelty that there's a woman in there. It's a novelty. And uh, it also means something new. This is something brand new that there's a woman in heaven. Yeah, somebody's going to go get Ken. Somebody, uh, we need a runner to go get Ken. It's on, it's on the world. 
Look, a novelty is a motion excited about something unusual. It's unusual that there'd be a woman. <coughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. Listen, and a wonder is an emotion excited by something strange. It's strange that a woman would be in here. It's strange. A, a, a wonder is an emotion excited by something great. It's great that a woman's going to heaven. Is any women in here going to heaven? Is that great or what? Huh? It's a great thing. It's a great thing. A wonder is an emotion excited by something extraordinary. It's extraordinary that there's a woman in heaven. It is. A, a wonder is an emotion excited by something not well understood. It's not well understood that there's a woman in heaven. You don't understand it. I don't understand it. But it's there. It's there. There's a woman. A wonder is an emotion that arrests the attention. All of heaven's looking now that there's a woman there. And not only that, a wonder is an emotion excited by something strange. It's strange that there's a woman there. It's strange. I'll tell you this much, it's grace. Also, a wonder means a miracle. It's a miracle that there's a woman in heaven. Y'all looking at me like something. But it's a miracle. It's a miracle that a woman called. Let's look at a couple of verses on it. How about Acts 3, 7? I'll take this. It's a little bit long. Come on. A little bit long. Three, verse 7. And he took him by the right hand, lifted him up, and immediately his feet, ankle bones, received strength. Anybody ever get saved immediately? Yep. It's immediate for you, brother. Yeah. It's immediate. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking, leaping, praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he that sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was healed held John and Peter, and all the people ran together unto them in the courts that's called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And heaven's greatly wondering. It's a great wonder that a woman's there. Yeah, come on. It really is. There's one more time. Let's charge on this one. Isaiah 29, 14. Isaiah 29, 14. We cease to wonder what we understand. And see, we really don't understand this if there's a woman there. There's a woman. Behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among these people. Behold, I will send my angel and they It's a marvelous work and a wonder this morning that there's a woman in heaven. Now, you don't have to agree with me, but that's what it is. Yeah. That's what it is. Now, this is not in the Bible. You don't have to believe it. If you don't want to, this is from Brother Rick. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a man. Yeah. I come this morning to tell you it's a wonder that a man would get married. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. It's a wonder. It's a one. It's a miracle. Yeah, it is. We'll go ahead and tell you it's a miracle. It's a miracle. A wonder. It's an astonishment. It's an emotion excited by something new. It's something brand new that a man would go to heaven. Yeah, come on. Brand new, brother Jason. You know it. That's why you can't get through a song without crying. Yeah. It's the. You know, it's a wonder that you're going. It's a miracle. That yep. you're going, brother yeah. Jesus. It's a miracle that any man in this section is going. It's something brand new. This is the cross. Back before that, there wasn't no men in heaven. Back in Genesis 1 1, there wasn't no men in heaven. The Lord had been alone. He said, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to make me a man. Yeah. Who will make me a man. Yeah. There wasn't none in heaven before Calvary. After the resurrection, the Lord emptied it out. There's something brand new we got to yep. It's a miracle. That a man gets to go to heaven. It's a miracle. It's something brand new. I wasn't going before November 16, 1974. It's a miracle. It's a wonder that Rick's a brother. It's a miracle that Rick got in the man. It's a wonder, Brother Jerry, that we got in, that a man would go to heaven. That's it, brother. It's a miracle, Brother Matt, but the future looks bright. We're going. It's a miracle. It's something brand oh, new that a man yeah. would go to heaven. Yeah. Man, this, yeah. It's a wonder. It's an amazement yeah. that a man really would go to heaven. Yeah. 
There appeared in heaven a great wonder of man. It's something unusual that a man. It's a place made for God. Yeah. It's unusual that a man. It's something strange. If you're not saved, you won't fit in there. You won't like. Right. 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 Come on. It's a strange. It's a strange thing that a man Lord. can go to heaven. Amen. It was made for God. And they just, it's a great thing. That a man, it's a great wonder that a man would go to heaven. Lord. Yep. But we're going, Brother Tom. Hey. It's extraordinary that a man would go to heaven. It's not well understood. I believe it. I believe every word of it, but I don't understand it. It's not well understood. It's a wonder that a man would go to heaven. It's an amazing thing. It's a, it's a, it arrests the attention of all heaven to notice that a man is yes. going to heaven. It's a strange thing that a man would go. It's a great thing that a man would go. It's all grace that a man would go. And it's a miracle yes. that a man would go. It's a miracle. Let's look at some verses. How about Psalm 119, verse 18? Chalk. He told us that we're going. He told us that we're going, and it's a wondrous thing to know that. This is going to cross over from wondrous over into wonderful here in a minute. It's wonderful that a man will go to heaven. I can't understand it. I can't comprehend it. How about 119, verse 129? Just... Just about like a man going to heaven is how wonderful yeah. they are. They tell, they tell us about it. The yeah. testimonies. Of, how about 139 verse 6? <laughs> oh, the Lord is good. His mercy endures forever. It's too wonderful for me to understand that a man, namely Brother Rick, is going to heaven. I really can't soak it all in. But I'm really going. Yeah. yeah. I'm really going. And it's a wonder. It's a wonder. It's yeah. something brand new. I've been made new. Right. Yeah, that's right. I get to go in. Yeah. Let's check it out. Isaiah 9 6. Isaiah 9 6. For unto us a child is given. Unto us a. I'm sorry, a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful. Our God's name is Wonderful, yeah. and we're going to where it's wonderful, and it's a wonder yeah. Yeah. that we get there. Yeah. It's a miracle yeah. that we get in. Let's check it out in Psalm 86, 10. Psalm 86, 10, Charles. It's a wondrous thing that he does so that a man can go to heaven. It's a wondrous thing. How about the Joshua 3 5? Joshua 3 5. A day with the Lord is at a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day, and tomorrow we're going to be in heaven, and it's a wonderful thing. It might be tomorrow, tomorrow. That's right. 24 hour tomorrow. It might not be a thousand years, but for sure, in a thousand years, there's going to be a wonderful thing going on. When a thousand years from today, a man's going to be in heaven. And it's a wonder. It's a wonder that we get to. Job 19, charge. Are you going? Right. Job 19. We're just doing a great thing. Right? Finding out. Wonders without number. Um, there was a, in the verses you read, a multitude that no man could number. Right. And it's a wonder. But a man's going to be there. Look, it's a, it's a wonder that any of us are going. Right. right. But he made sure of it. 
He went to great lengths to make sure that me and you people. That's right. And it's a wonder. It's a wonder. Revelation chapter 8. Back over there. Now this silence could be for many reasons. There's silence over in Numbers. Israel was silent and mourned for error. And then in Deuteronomy, Israel was silent and they mourned for Moses. And many times were silent there at the castle. And down at the funeral. Could be silence for more. There could be some kind of silence. Sometimes Ezekiel shows us a time of silence for repentance. Sometimes when we repent, it's just silent. It's just silent. It's like Abba, Father. Lord, I'm sorry. I'm repenting. I'm coming. And it's silence because we're broken. Sometimes that's what the silence is for. But here I really think it's for amazement. Back in chapter 6, if you remember, there was a book with seven seals, and the Lord opened six of them, but now here, he opens that last one, and the whole book's open there. They can see it all. And I think it's amazing. It's amazing looking at the holy book. It's all open now. It's all wide open. They can see the whole book now. It's the calm before the storm. Verse 1 again. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense that he should offer with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. The book's open now. All seven seals are open. They're all seven unlocked. And we're looking at all of it now. Right. All of it. Verse 4. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightning and an earthquake. And the seven angels, which had the seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sing. Now things are bad. It's getting worse all the time. This is, this is a, a, a dark picture, but reality is going to be worse during the tribulation period when the trump judgments break loose, when the angels turn loose on earth. And just like Jericho fell on the seventh day of the seventh trumpet, so is God going to flail the sin out of these earth dwellers on the seventh trumpet judgment. He's flailing the sin out of the earth dwellers. And here the angel priest is making this offering of incense to the Lamb. And it's for Israel. It's for 144,000. And it's for you. And it's for me. And it's for the multitude. They came through the tribulation and washed their cells in the blood of the Lamb and, and got a white robe. It's Man. for them. In verse 7, And the first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire <clears throat> mingled with blood. And they were cast upon the earth. And the third part of the trees was burned up. And the third part of the green grass was burned up. Sounds like there won't be much more law than going on. A third part of the trees are burned up. <laughs> Sounds like there won't be a lot of grass mowing going on. A third part of the grass is burned up. Right. Lots will be going out of business of loggers and the grass cutting. It's going to file bankruptcy. The plant life is created first and now it's destroyed. It's created first in Genesis. It's a bad picture. See, the oxygen producer right. Right. just got sad. Right. It's going to get rough. It's going to get hard to breathe. Yeah. It's a bad picture, but reality is worse. Every once in a while, I get where I can't breathe, and 
and I make it to one, one of Kim's inhalers on. It's sad back there. But uh, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. The reality is worse than this picture. It's going to be rough. Let's look at the, on this side, let's check that out, Isaiah 40, 6 through 8. Over here, let's check it out in James 1, 10 and 11. James 1, 10 and 11 over here. Over here, uh, Isaiah 40, 6, 7 and 8. <coughs> Chapter 40, verses 6, 7 and 8. The boy said crying. He said, what shall I cry? All flesh of grass and all the good news thereof is as the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fadeth, because the spirit of the Lord flows upon it. Surely the people is grass. The grass withers, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. You can count on it. Man. You can depend on it. You can trust it. You can take it to bank. Yeah. It's going to happen. Man. Let's try it in uh, James 1, 10, 11. I know the grass is us. It's a picture of us. But this is real grass and real trees. It's going to get burned up. Uh, James 1, 10, 11. Anytime we ever killed hogs and scraped hogs and butchered hogs, we built a fire under a 55 gallon barrel and heated the water and did it. But I understand some heat up rocks in the fire and then put the rocks in the water and it boils faster, is what they tell me. Uh, I know my mom said when they were kids, they'd heat up a brick and put it in their bed at night to keep the kids warm. I've heard that the Amish do that. To ride in the buggy, they heat up a brick or something and put in with the kids under a blanket to keep them warm. Is that true, Sister Moon? It's true. It's a gospel. <laughs> <laughs> it's a gospel. And uh, one time we were up on the river. We were uh, camped out. Brother Garth was there. Me. I think Sam was, Sam was there. Josh Dillon was there. Some of you have met him. And Josh had been reading a book about the Indians. They'd heat up rocks, put it in their bed to keep warm or whatever to keep warm. And uh, he missed that part about the brick size, you know. He got this great old big rock over there. He's a big old railroad that wears a bib on cross. And he had these railroad gloves that looked like welding gloves. He was real thick. He got this big old 25 pound rock and put it in the fire to get it warm. We sat around there telling lies and stuff. <laughs> and uh, after a while, I didn't really notice, but Josh got up, got that rock and left. And uh, that thing was glowing. I mean, it's red, it's glowing. But, but, cherry red. Yeah, it's cherry red. And then a little bit, he come back to the circle there, the liar's bench. He's all sitting around the campfire there having fun, telling stories, you know. And uh, Sam said, uh, what'd you do with that rock, Joss? He said, well, I put it in my bed to keep the bed warm, put it under my seat back. <laughs> Sam said, uh, go burn the place down. They got little uh, three-sided three -sided shelters about the size of the baptistry right there that uh, you can roll your sleeping bag out in. He put that thing in there. Sam said, you'll burn that thing down to the ground. He said, no. He said, and he fell in the river that day. He said, I wrapped my wet bibs around it. <laughs> Garth said, don't matter. <laughs> and we turned around and looked, there was smoke. 
come out of there, and Joshua would come running, and he'd come out, and them bibs was, they was just pieces and strings of black. There wasn't any sparks, but they was burned up. This mountain on fire is going to go into the ocean, and I'm pretty sure the ocean's going to boil. Just like boiling hogs. Just like dropping hot rocks in a 55-gallon burner. And the ocean's going to boil. This is what's going to happen. Verse 8. And the second angel sounded, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. This is a picture, but reality is going to be worse. Let's look at it in Jeremiah 51, 24, and 26, Charles. Jeremiah 51, 24 through 26. And I will render unto Babylon and unto all the inhabitants of Caldera all their evil that they have done in Zion in your sight, saith the Lord. Behold, I am against thee. Am I on the right one? Yes. Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, saith the Lord, which destroyeth all the earth. And I will stretch out mine hand upon thee, and roll thee down from the rocks, and will make thee a burnt mountain. And they shall not take of thee a stone for a corner, nor a stone for foundations, but thou shalt be desolate forever, saith the Lord. It don't matter. The Lord is going to cast a burning mountain into the ocean, and that thing's going to fall, just like slaughtered hogs, just like burning up. Bull in the hair of a hog. Verse uh, 9. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. It might be a radioactive mountain. I don't know. I know for sure it's a mountain on fire, and it wrecks the ships and kills life in the sea. Verse 10. That's all the salt water is messed up and turned to blood. That's the salt water. Verse 10, here's the fresh water. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of water. Now the fresh water is contaminated. It's a bad picture, but reality's worse. Reality's going to be worse. Verse 11. <clears throat> And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. Now I looked up Wormwood, and it's a plant with a bitter, <coughs> nauseous taste. Evidently it's poison because many men died of the waters. Or this Wormwood is. It's poison. The ocean's messed up. The fresh water's messed up. You can live without food about 30, 40 days. You can't go without water maybe two or three days at the most. And it's a painful death to dehydrate. Verse uh, 12. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars, so that the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. Now, a 24-hour day, a third part of that is eight hours. Eight hours has changed. But if you catch it at the spring equinox or the fall equinox, when the days and nights are equal, and it's 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of dark, then one uh, third of 12 is four. So for those 12 hours of daylight, there'll only be eight hours then. Four, four of the daylights are messed up. Daylight hours are darkened. And then for the nighttime, for four of those hours, if it's 12 hours of dark, for four of those hours, the sun, moon, and stars don't shine. They're gone. It won't be like last night. Anyone look out last night? Looked out in the middle of the night. That moon was so bright, and it was behind clouds, and still so bright, it just looked like daylight. It was just glowing out there. It won't happen for a third part of the night. And the third part of the day, the sun won't shine. Eight hours total. Eight hours total. 
Suck up some verses on this. How about the, in the first bank of pews over here? How about Matthew 24, 22? 20, Matthew 24, 22. Down through here, Luke 21, 25. You'll never find this. Down through here, Amos chapter 8, verse 9. And then, let's see, how about over yonder, Daniel 12, 3. Okay, uh, Matthew 24, 22. For some other place to be saved, that's where the elect say, those days shall be shortened. The days are going to be shortened, the night's going to be shortened, the sunshine's going to be shortened. Everything's going to change. Stability, the things you've been used to forever, never know no different. It's going to be changed. Luke 21, 25. It's going to be a dark picture. It is a dark picture. Reality. Matthew 21, 25. There shall be signs in the sun and in the moon, and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations that perplex the, the sea and the waves roaring. There's going to be distress and there's going to be perplexity. We're talking about the great tribulation period here. A seven year period when Jesus is flailing the sin out of earth dwellers, out of Christ rejectors. Down through here, Amos 8, chapter, chapter 8, verse 9. There shall come past in that day, says the Lord God, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in the clear day. In the middle of the day, in a clear day. Maybe like on Mount Calvary when the sun went out for three hours. It's going to be like that, total black, total black. Things are going to change. There will be no constants. Let's look at Revelation 9, 1 here. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. Now, sometimes, or a star is an angel, sometimes. Let's look back uh, at uh, chapter 1, verse 20, if you remember this. And the mystery of seven stars, which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden, golden candlesticks, and the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. It's going to be a dark picture. One third of the sunshine is going to be blocked out. One third of the time for the sun, moon, and stars won't shine at night. Verse 13. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. It's bad, but it's going to get worse. Yeah. Just like the sun, moon, and stars were created on the fourth day, the fourth angel is blacking them out now. The earth dwellers, if they had obeyed the light yeah. that was given them, they would have received more light. Yeah. If we obey the light, God will give us more light. If I reject the light, I'm doomed for darkness. It's just the way it is. It's just a law of physics of this book. Light obeyed gives increased light. Light rejected gives night. On the earth, the earth dwellers are the Christ rejectors, all in one pile. And the Lord's getting ready to fire the sin out of them. Let's pray. Dear God, you're so good to us. Lord, you're the great God and our Savior. And it's a wonder, God, that any of us get in it. But you made sure of it on Calvary. And we thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for your plan. And that you're the man. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.